the chat's popping YouTube. So, some of you might have heard of Shad M. Brooks. He's an Aussie bastard who runs a super popular YouTube channel called Shadowversity and the whiny bitch YouTube channel called Night's Watch. Anyway, he's also a successful fantasy author, with his first and only novel being the kind of infamous Shadow of the Conqueror. Well, I finally read it after like five years, but because of the upcoming graphic novel adaption, I figured it kind of be relevant again, and... This book is f oh, like really fucked, and not in like an edgy way or a disturbing sort of like Stephen King, Clive Barker kind of way. It's just fucked up in a kind of out of touch way. We'll get there later. Okay, so this story opens on Dalen Namaran. He's a whiny old man living alone in a village somewhere. He used to be a Hitler slash Stalin monster mashup, except worse because he also serially raped teenagers. So yeah, but he feels really, really bad about it now. He's been stewing in exile for 20 years since he was deposed, and the whole world thinks he died when his flagship went down during the final battle and the war against him. But psych, he escaped, and he's been marinating in self-pity for two decades. Dalin, or Dalis the Conqueror, as he was more commonly known, hasn't got around to killing himself or turning himself in for his crimes because he's on mad copium and thinks that it is more punishment to be uh, kept alive knowing what he did. Sure, buddy. Sure. But first, I should probably go into the world building because it is definitely this book's strongest part. Um, so it takes place on this world called Everfall. The world is flat here, and there are floating continents, Zendikar style. However, the top and bottom of the world are kind of like... You know when you go off the edge of the map in Pac-Man, you come in the other side? It's like that. Um, there are skyships, which are like spaceships a little bit. And the tech level is kind of high for Fantasy World. Uh, days and nights exist, but they last decades. Like Minecraft, when it's night time, all the mobs spawn and start killing everyone. These mobs are called Shades, and they are kind of like demon vampires. They kill people and turn them into Shades. When night falls, all hell breaks loose. However, what in our world we call days, they actually call falls, because there's this big meteorite that is perpetually falling from the sky, only to hit the bottom of the world and come back into the top. Um, so that's how they tell time. That's also Chronicles of Everfall. Everfall. The Fall. Get it? That's why the world's called that. Hey. But uh, there's also some magic users as well, clerics called Lightbringers who can summon light, which is how magic is used, and Lightbinders, which are basically paladins. Uh, they use the light to use magic. It's kind of like the Force, but way more TTRPG-ish slash video game-ish. Um, there is a holy order of Lightbinders called the Arknights that are sworn to fight evil, uh, especially the Shade. And um, anyway, before Dalen was Conqueror, he was a soldier boy who fought in the Fourth Night, which is basically winter from Game of Thrones, except instead of White Walkers, it's Shades. Anyway, Dalen is preparing to kill himself by jumping off of the world with a Sunstone and a Darkstone, which are two magical rocks of that power basically everything in the world. If you jump from the world with one of them, you die. But nobody has ever done it with both, so Dalen wants to try it out for some reason. Basically, Sunstone creates light, which can be used for magic and to power the technology, and Darkstone counters it. Anyway, Dalus is uh, writing a suicide note detailing his life. He makes sure to say he is very, very sorry for being a Stalin Hitler pedo on steroids, but also takes the time to write in a bit about some Duke's fucking goats because he has the emotional maturity of a 12-year-old. Dalen is a shitty character in every way. He might be the most repugnant, awful character I have ever read. I'm going to talk about him a lot throughout this review, so he sucks. Anyway, once his suicide note is written, he goes off to kill himself. However, he walks outside and meets this absolute giga chad called Arik. Arik is a cleric. There you go, you know his character. Anyway, he's waiting for someone, and somehow he doesn't recognize this guy as Davis the Conqueror, despite the fact that we learn later this guy is actually Rayatan Liusa, I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, he was literally the leader of the rebellion that overthrew Dalis 20 years ago. Somehow he doesn't recognize him. To the point where I wonder if, like, that was retconned later in the book. That, like, Arik was supposed to be a different character at first, and then, like, eh, It's a bit hard to tell. Anyway, Dalen meets some dude from the village and hitches a ride with him. The guy has this dueling badge that everyone wears. This is a sword-obsessed society, basically because of the shade. You know, everyone's trained in swordplay, because the shade could come back at any moment, and swords are really good at killing them. 
Um, and there's a whole, like, dueling culture. And Daedalus is obviously a Grand Master of the Sword, or Grand Prime Master of the Marshal of the Sword, or whatever, whatever the ranking is. I don't, I don't remember. And um, this guy, and so when you win a duel, sorry, basically you get a little badge, and then people can tell how good you are. So Daedalus ends up challenging this guy to a duel, and because he is basically a Mary Sue, despite being 82, he beats this guy through his mad sword skills. Epic. So anyway, Dalen gets his old ass to the edge of the world and jumps off. <laughs> However, he comes back to the top of the world, but oh shit, he's 17 again for some reason. He didn't die, and he also has superpowers. So Dalen now has the power of the Arknights for some reason. Uh, he's basically invincible. We've got a basically invincible, repentant pedo Hitler. Fantastic. We're off to a great start. So he learns all about his new magic. It's basically a video game. We'll probably touch on this again later, but the magic comes from the sun, or from light, more specifically. You can't really use it in the dark, which is why at night, like when night falls, the light bringers, which is like Arik, have to summon light for light binders to use. I'm going to gloss over a lot of stuff in this world building section because it's quite in depth. But anyway, Dalen can then bond these, uh, these, these lights uh, to parts of himself. He gets four bonds, which is actually one more than the normal knight gets, and it's never really explained why he gets this, but anyway, he's just that special. And um, the magic basically goes exponential, so if I were to bond light to my eyes, I could see twice as far, then if I do it again, I could see four times as far, then 16, then 32. He could do this for his, you know, basic RPG stats, you know, like his strength and his uh, constitution, but he also learns he can do it to his mass, weight, except, and stuff like that, so he can, like, jump super high like a Jedi. Um, he can also do this with his intelligence, which is sort of a D&D stat, actually, um, but at the end of the book, this magic system takes all idea that this is remotely realistic and throws it out the window because Dalen binds the light to his, and I'm not actually making this up, his skill with a sword. What? What the fuck is this magic system? Like, how? how what, what does that even constitute? His skill with a sword? That's a mix of years of training, strength, dexterity, uh, sort of like predicting your opponent. You're telling me? Could I go to the casino and buy light to my luck and just win? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we get some more random world building that never comes up again, and in the process, Dalen kills someone who tried to mug him publicly using his new powers. He then claims to be an undercover Arknight, and uh, this is kind of relevant later. Anyway, Dalen goes back to his house because he realizes he's done fucked up by leaving a suicide note out for all to see. He comes back and Arik is still there, and it turns out that the Light, which is basically the Christian God, has sent Arik a dream about young Dalen, and now he has to accompany him. Dalen doesn't want this, and uh, he says that he is uh, Dalen the Conqueror's son, and spins some bullshit about how that happened. He goes into his house and finds that that dude he beat in the sword fight earlier is reading the suicide note. He's basically just like, yeah, I'm Peter Hitler's son, get over it. He then goes and gets some of his, sorry, I mean, his dad's stuff. Chief among these is a Sunforged sword called Imperius. Sunforged stuff is blessed by the light to become basically indestructible. However, this stuff called Darkstone destroys it, which we mentioned earlier. Uh, it also takes away the light powers of like light binders. So the Sunforged stuff is linked to someone, and if either is destroyed, usually the other one is too. Like if I had a Sunforged sword and you shattered it with Darkstone, there'd be like a 90% chance I'd just drop dead, and vice versa. So Arik is really confused about how the fuck Imperius is still alive if Dalis is indeed dead. He's also really confused because the sword is linked to Dalen now. Once again, Dalen spins some bullshit about how sometimes Sunnacles, that's what Sunforge linked is called, uh, can transfer onto offspring. Which is later proven to be untrue. Uh, well, not untrue, but only it goes to the firstborn. And I don't know why Arik is this dumb. But anyway. Arik accepts this for some reason. And uh, so now Dalen needs to go to the capital and forge a fake birth certificate before the news about his death and existence gets out. I'm on the very edge of my seat. I go to a transit hub to get a lift to the capital. However, Dalen decides he's going to go be a vigilante for a bit and starts brutally killing muggers, rapists, and all kinds of stuff like that. He sees this as some kind of sick penance for his own misdeeds, and so he's straight up rips the dick off and then kills a guy who's raping his daughter and a whole bunch of similarly gory stuff. Hey, I gotta get my dick sewn back on! You, you shut, shut the up. fuck up! However, he's a filthy fucking hypocrite because this man serially raped girls when he was in power and he gets to keep his cock 
and the book makes many a reference to the amount of erections he gets. I'm, I'm not kidding, like, oh, I don't know. So Dalen and Arik get a lift for some human traffickers. They, uh, they don't actually know human traffickers yet, but they are going to go under the world as it's faster. Um, because remember, the world is flat, you can fly under or over it. Um, however, the problem with going under the world is uh, all these filthy pirates. People get attacked by pirates a lot. I'm, I'm talking straight up, like, Blackbeard, like, Captain Barbosa pirates. This was pretty cool, I'll be honest. But I need to take a break in this book's bloated fucking plot to talk about two things. Basically, at the start of every chapter, we get a paragraph from Bayless' suicide note where we learn all about his rise and fall. This is actually way more interesting than the novel we actually get, and I found myself like looking forward to the beginning of every chapter to actually get to read this a little bit. Um, it's quite a cool little story. And um, So anyway, so he rose to prominence during the fourth night and entered something called the Underworld to defeat the Shade. He became a great leader, but then the bourgeoisie attacked them, worried that these new war heroes could threaten their rule. They killed all of Dana's family, and so he rallied the people and took over. He then went way too far with it, started executing people willy-nilly, installed basically a proto-communist regime, raped a lot of teenagers, and then got his ass handed to him by Arik. There was a big war, and for a while, Dalen's Dawn Empire was winning, but then the Ark Knights, which are supposed to stay neutral, deemed him a threat to the whole world and joined the fight against him. So it's basically like the Jedi in the Clone Wars. Anyway, after that, Dalen's Empire fell, and he faked his own death and escaped. Also, there are these two Ark Knights looking for Dalen, uh, as he used his powers in public and claimed to be an Ark Knight. Uh, there are two of them. Qseg, who I am going to brush over as he is completely irrelevant for the amount of page time he actually gets. I'm serious, this guy dies off page at the end. So yeah, he's there. He's an Ark Knight and he comes from a culture that is kind of obsessed with sex. This whole book is obsessed with sex, it's very strange. He walks around basically naked, as in his culture you have to do that to tempt people, and if you bang outside of marriage you are forever disgraced. But he's a horny idiot who did that, so he's basically shunned by his people, and so now he's a Jedi. Then there is Lyra, who is basically a generic strong woman paladin PC from D&D, except for the fact that her one dimension as a character is that she was repeatedly raped by Dalen when she was 14, and it fucked up her life. She got pregnant, had an abortion, which stopped her from ever being able to have another child. She also basically has a panic attack whenever sex comes up, which is unfortunate, because uh, Cusack is naked all the time. This poor girl is absolutely... like, the book just shits on her. Like... Ah, uh, no, this book is just fucked in the morality department. I just feel bad for Lyra. Like, very bad for her, actually. Um, I don't think the book quite understands how tragic a character she is. Like, anyway... These two are mostly irrelevant to the story, to be honest. They get a lot of page time, though, but you could pretty much cut them out and the story would remain basically the same. Um, anyway, so uh, on the Sex Trafficker Express, Dalen is really hoping some pirates show up so he can brutally murder them. Because this guy's really repentant. He's given up on his evil ways, guys. It's It doesn't count as murder if they're already bad people. Which, in this world, it actually doesn't. You are allowed just to kill bad people. Whatever. So, uh, some pirates show up. Thank God. And, uh, and he does that. He kills a lot of pirates. <laughs> He then has a fight with their mini-boss, Captain Blackheart. Yeah, that's his name. Blackheart is this pirate mini-boss with a few mechanics you're going to have to get down before you can start the raid and... Oh, wait, this is not an... This isn't an RPG. This is a novel. You could, could, have, could have fucking fooled me, though. Anyway, so Blackheart looks suspiciously like Dalen, and he claims to be a bastard son of Dalus the Conqueror. However, Dalen used protection during all his raping, apparently, and his advisors told him that he never fathered any children. But this guy is so fucking gullible... He just believed that. And how did this guy run an empire? Anyway, so they have a fight, but then Dalen just uses his Jedi powers and it's the wins. Dalen is so fucking OP, this book fucking sucks any shit. So yeah, anyway, no enemy is a threat at all here. Dalen toys with Blackheart for a bit, but then he remembers that he's level 80 in a level 30 zone and one-shots him. He then decides to uh, take the still-alive Blackheart and uh, impale him, skewer him on a uh, spike, like the Impaler style. <laughs> Uh, for being a sex trafficker. Does Dalen hop on the spike after him? No, because this guy is a fucking hypocrite. Okay, we'll talk about Dalen later. As a side note, I don't actually think I've ever hated a character quite as much as I hate Dalen. This man is the most disgusting, perverted, cringe, poorly written piece of shit to ever grace the pages of a book. I literally don't think I despise any character more. At least not in fantasy. 
but yeah, I've, I've a lot to say about Dalen. So anyway, Dalen then meets this kid called Sane, who is this cabin boy who has been blackmailed into being Blackheart's cabin boy, because Dalen knows he's not that bad, because Dalen has the sea alignment ability unlocked. I mean, sorry, he can use his powers to detect the inner light of someone. Fuck it, why not? That's a thing in this world. Like, D&D alignments basically exist. Um, anyway, and he, so he realizes this kid isn't actually that bad, and so he press gangs him into his crew for a bit. This kid basically, like, he shows up at the climax again, but like, like, ah, oh, this book's a fucking mess. Um, so, so then Dalen commandeers Blackheart's ship and begins to tow it, uh, but then he finds out that the guys he bought a lift from are also sex traffickers. Whoa. And so he, uh, you know, kills them all. And then he rapes their captain's ass with a spike, just like he did to Blackheart. Justice. He and Arik then free the sex slave girls and they say they're going to get them to safety. One of the girls tries to hit on Dalen and he gets all angsty about how he can't forgive himself for raping all those women. Like, good. What do you want, a fucking medal? Like, give me a fucking break. I hate this character. So uh, then one of the girls hits on Sane. And, I mean, this book is hella horny. I have no idea why. It's just cringe. You could tell me this book was written by a teenager and I'd 100% believe you. So they go to Blackheart's hidden base for part two of this random ass side quest and Dalen learns that Blackheart actually was his son. So that's cool. He then has an existential meltdown about it, but I honestly don't give a shit. I hope Dalen suffers a thousand lifetimes of pure torment. This guy's a first class <laughs> In Blackheart's fortress, he and Arik have to fight another mini-boss. This time it's a group of Shades, which Blackheart somehow caught. Anyway, they kill the Shades, but the Shade recognises him as Dalus the Conqueror. Well, or as Dalus, I... Uh, I think they call him the Conqueror, though, which... Whatever. The Shade are kind of weird. I wish we never really saw them, to be honest. I think they, uh... Like, I wish they were just talked about and featured in the flashbacks. They seem to have some kind of intelligent hive mind. But they can also operate independently from each other, but also they're kind of... I think they have some of the memories of the host body. It's not really explained, and I'm kind of glad, actually. I don't like it when these sort of eldritch horrors are really explained in books. I think they work much better when they're not. Uh, anyway, somehow, uh, Arik still doesn't realise Dalen is Dalus, despite the fact that she fucking told him. Uh, and they also learn that Dornis, these sort of Antifa types who want to... They keep popping up throughout the book, but... Um, they basically want a return of the Dawn Empire. And anyway, they've been buying raided vessels from Blackheart for a while and are planning a big terrorist attack. Sorry, mostly peaceful protest on the New World Order. So anyway, they get to the capital city finally. Hey, news of his heroic acts and the news of his existence has already got everywhere. So the main quest has been failed. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. But then Lyra and sex icon Cusick catch back up with him and try to arrest him for a number of crimes. He recognises Lyra because he used to rape her when she was 14, and uh, they have a bit of a fight. <laughs> for some reason, Arik also fights, and um, he fights for Dalen, and Dalen escapes. <laughs> Arik then manages to broker a deal with the knights, saying that Dalen will join them when he wants to. He's a great guy, trust me. Yada yada yada. So just imagine... Just imagine... That you're a Jew. And you go to Argentina, you found basically Adolf Hitler when he was 17, like literally just Adolf Hitler, the age of 17, uh, except in this world Adolf Hitler was also a nonce, so, you know, so we somehow got worse than Hitler, uh, and went crime fighting with him for a bit. That's Arik's life right now. I just feel bad for this guy. Anyway, Dalen goes and has a run-in with some Dawnists. I actually can't remember exactly when this happened. I think this happens here too. I don't know. The whole book blows into one because it's a fucking plot. Like, it's just a bunch of wandering around. So, eventually he meets back up with Arik of the two nights. He claims that he knew who Lyra was because his dad talked about her. But his dad felt really, really guilty about raping her. Maybe you just shouldn't have serially raped teenagers, you fucking nonce. Anyway, Arik and Cusick have a nice little moment. Arik draws a picture of his family, who are all dead. Guess who killed them? And uh, it's nice for a bit. 
Dalen chooses to turn himself in to answer for all the vigilantism he did and is cleared of all charges. And then he sets about to stop the Dornists. So he goes and pretends that he wants to join the communist revolution and gets taken to see the boss, who is this girl whose name escapes me. She wants to fuck him, but then uh, he learns of all about their plan and then kills her by caving her face in. Okay. And then he just kills all the other Dornists thugs. So yeah, it turns out the Dornists have been harvesting the magic juice engines from the spaceships and are going to crash an island into the capital city. So they evacuate, or try to evacuate the city, and summon the Avengers. I mean the Jedi, I mean the Arknights. However, Arik finally gets wise about um, the whole uh, Dalen Bin Dalis thing, and reveals that he is none other than Rayton Luis Lusa. And somehow no one recognised him throughout this entire novel as the literal face of the rebellion. I don't, I don't understand. Was there no editor for this? Anyway, they, they, they have a big fight, but Dalen manages to give Arik the slip. I mean, at least it's actually finding some stakes in this fight. Like, Arik is basically on par with Dalen, um, power-wise. A anyway, Dalen gets back to the night to a planning an attack on the evil communists, but then Arik tells Lyra about the whole thing. She has a meltdown and decides she's also going to go and kill Dalen, which is kind of justifiable. Um, and uh, the knights go up onto the falling island to kill the commies. There's a huge fight, but this is where Dalen learns about his sword skills and how he can just bind light to them. And so he becomes invincible. Oh my god. Dalen is just basically playing with hacks. Uh, so anyway, Lyra realises that she has to go do her job, and so Arik shows up again to kill Pedo Hitler. He then challenges Dalen formally to a sword fight, which is a customary thing here as we established earlier. If you get challenged to a sword fight, you're supposed to, you know, have a fight with no magic or anything. So there's no, no superpowers, and uh, Arik manages to kill him. <laughs> However, he then decides that he's going to heal Dalen at the last second, and actually forgives him. Despite the fact that Dalen literally killed his family. And I actually, I'm actually going to not be so like, sarcastic here. Like, I actually get what the book's going for here. It's, it basically, it sets Arik up as a foil to Dalen. And shows that the right thing to do is to forgive your enemies um, over becoming them. Uh, Dalen chose the dark path of trying to kill the people who killed his family. Whereas Arik chooses the noble path. But it's all a bit muddled because Dalen is just so evil. And Arik is just such a good person that it just kind of like... It doesn't help that Arik becomes a complete simp for Dalen in the like after this. Like this guy straight up just forgives him and is friendly with him. It's like he killed your family. That's not easily forgiven. I understand not killing him, but like you shouldn't be friends with this guy. So they hop up onto the mountain of death and realize that there are a bunch of shade on here too for some reason. There might, I mean, there might as well be. Uh, all the other knights are dead, Qtech included. So what was the point? He literally died off page. You couldn't. The book's so long already. Could you not put one Cusack POV chapter in where he dies? It would have been quite sad. I kind of liked Cusack actually. He was a cool character, but like, what was the point? <sighs> Dalen and Arik and Co managed to kill the communists, kill the Saint demons, and then Dalen literally cuts the island, the falling island. Like, I'm talking like a, you know, it's an island. Slices it in half. The day is saved, hooray. So then Dalen gets uh, put on trial for all his crimes, thank God, and he whines and moans the whole time about how every day alive has been torment for years, and and uh, then he gets sent to be a Jedi as he is so OP that the people don't even want to lose his OPness. Wow. So Pedo Hitler basically becomes an indentured servant to the Jedi Order. The book ends, thank Christ. I will live with the so, as with all these indie reviews, I will tell you what I think the book did objectively well, then objectively poorly, and then I'm going to give my own analysis, which will probably get a bit ranty for this one. So, the good. The world building. Oh my goodness, the world building is fantastic. Like, I love Everfall. Best original world in a long time. Really, really long time. Like, it's so creative, and I really want an RPG set in this world where I can just explore and and stuff like that like the cultures of this world are so thought out they're so in depth and i didn't really mention them in the review because they're not really relevant to this, they're not really relevant to the story but the world is so fleshed out it's so original it's fantastic there is so much character to every setting every alley every just just everything about this world is fantastic there's just so much depth 
it feels like a real lived in place and and I mean I didn't care for the actual story of this book but I did enjoy just sitting around with the characters and experiencing their world so just, just fantastic however this the world building is not enough to save this book so what did the book do bad from a more like a more objective viewpoint so the actual story where is it it doesn't exist it's just a long list of random side quests our characters go on this would maybe work as a video game but even then it'd be a bit of a stretch but there's no real antagonist there's no real conflict other than Dalen just being a whiny bitch I couldn't I don't even think I could apply the three act structure to this novel as the conflict changes every few chapters. So, like, at the beginning, we need to get to the capital to forge Dalen's birth records, but then we go off for a few hundred pages fighting pirates, and then we have a conflict with the Arknights. But then Antifa is going to blow up the city, so we need to stop them. And you could have split this into a fairly logical trilogy, actually, with the Dawnists being the final boss. There could be a, you know, a set... They could be set up slowly in each book, and then Dalen's final destiny is to right his wrongs and destroy his own empire once and for all. You could have even had the, the birth record thing as book one, Black Heart's the villain of book two, which then leads into the whole Dawnus conspiracy, and, 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 you know, bam. But in one one book, I mean, Attack of the Clones is a tighter plot than this. Um, another note is that the prose is fine, but a lot of the terminology is really out of place, and the magic system is kind of bad. Like, once again, it works well in, like, a video game or, like, a a tabletop game but it's pretty shit when put into a novel they also use like really weird word choices that like really cringe like they use the word overpowered like there's a bit where Dalen said that'd be so overpowered and it's like what? or there's a quote here like their armour is easy to counter etc like I, I could go on these are like nerdy gamer terms I'd, I'd say something's overpowered when talking about like a new Magic the Gathering card or you know I'd say uh, an item in an RPG is good but is easy to counter. It's just elementary and rather cringe. <sighs> the rest of this critique is more the personal section. So without further ado, Dalen sucks. Dalen Namaran is awful. You're awful, Murray. Me? I'm awful? Oh yeah, how am I awful? Like really, really awful. Like seriously evil. Let's break it down. So he is, as we established, Pedo Hitler Stalin. He's also a whiny bitch that is in constant denial about the fact that him being kept alive is a curse or whatever. If this guy was actually repentant, he'd turn himself in and let the people have their retribution. All this talk of how sorry and how resentful of himself he is, he, he doesn't fucking show it. He then goes about killing and torturing other bad people but none of them are as bad as he was and that bullshit sense alignment thing doesn't count i don't care if Eric's like oh dalen has such a good inner light i don't fucking care the guy was evil it's like you have to keep in mind that dalen is murdering guys significantly younger than he is as well he's 82 so he has found redemption late very late in his life these guys very well could have come to the same realization as him but he doesn't let them instead he fucking stabs him up the ass with a wooden spike. Instead, he kills them and chops their dicks off and... Well, well, morally grandstanding about it, he is a hypocrite. A complete, complete, disgusting hypocrite. He makes Holden Caulfield look like an angel. So there is his interaction with Lyra. He straight up flirts with this woman. A woman he literally raped when she was a kid. He has no regard for others. He's all woe me all the time. And he thinks butchering evil men will make up for him being an evil person. It doesn't. He's also a, just has an awful personality. He's so snarky and generally obnoxious. He feels like one of those YA dystopian teenage girl protagonists, but where, you know, they're 82 and are a murder pedo in the body of a 17-year-old. He is just plain obnoxious. I hate every second I'm in this bastard's head. Why do authors always make these people so snarky? It's not charismatic. How the fuck was this guy taken seriously as an emperor? Let me ask you something. Do you like snarky people in real life when you meet them? No. You find them annoying. Cringe. Why does every author make their... Fucking protagonist so snarky? But, yeah, as I said, how did this guy get taken seriously as the Emperor? He straight up puts in his suicide note slash justification for being a dictator a bit where he says that some dukes fuck goats or sheep or something. Like, man, time and a place. Do you want to show remorse? How about not putting in weird bestiality fetish porn in your... Fucking suicide note. 
It would make sense if this snarky idiot was a like a uh, like a character, like a facade put on by the much more serious, stoic, and reserved Dalis as a front while pretending to be his own son. See, that would actually make sense. But like you know, this is a guy who survived the fourth night, had his entire family murdered before his own eyes, conquered the whole world. He was hit the Stellan for a bit, and then lost a massive war, the biggest and I think first world war of this whole world. I think it says. He should be bitter, grizzled, no-nonsense, very serious in my opinion, not a snarky edgelord. Like, holy shit, this character sucks ass. He feels like a 10-year-old's D&D character. But anyway, now we get to my final real gripe with Dalen. He's a very suit. This guy's so overpowered. Like, he figures out magic immediately. His magic is actually stronger than all the other knights. Everyone loves him, or wants to sleep with him, or both. The only time he loses is because he intentionally nerfs himself. Half the bad guys in this book are completely meaningless chaff. It's terrible. As I said, Dalen is the most vile protagonist I think I've ever read. Fuck this guy. And now my final thoughts. The structure of this book is bad. Like, why isn't Arik the main character? He would make such a better main character. We could see, you know, the whole story through his eyes, learn about Dalen through his eyes, be introduced to Dalen as Dalis' son, and then slowly the penny could drop to us that he is actually just Dalis, except young again. Seriously, then the forgiveness at the end actually feels a kind of earned, like a real payoff. Uh, like the whole moral is to not become your enemy or something. That way we aren't stuck inside Dalen's head, oh my god. But then... But yeah, this story is a weird one. I actually enjoyed reading most of it. The world building is amazing and super fun. But it's just a mess. There's no real plot, it feels like a video game half the time, and the main character is repulsive. I don't even really know what the moral stance of the book is. Like, is Dylan supposed to be redeemed at the end? I mean, th th there's actually a bit, right? Okay, and I'm not actually exaggerating. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but like, there's a bit at the end where he justifies a bunch of his rapes by saying that, hey, like, at least the girls got kids out of it and they love them. And then the rape victims echo this sentiment. I don't know. The writing's fine. The character work is fine. The world is fantastic. To be honest, this feels like it was written by a teenager. If a teenager wrote this, I'd be thinking to myself, wow, that's a great start, you've got a solid career ahead of you, but this is like a 40-year-old man who wrote this. I don't really want to give this book a 2 out of 5, because that would mean it's ranked the same as Breach of Peace, which this book is, from at least a technical level, vastly superior. But Breach of Peace's story was more competently constructed, and I was... <sighs> I was going to give this a 3 out of 5, but Daylin just sucks so much that I'm just dropping it to 2 out of 5 out of spite. Not sure if I would recommend this one to anyone, to be honest. The world is fun, but just read a synopsis or something. I hated virtually every second Dalen was on the page. And that, and that was Shadow of the Conqueror. This review ended up being a lot more negative than I first thought it would be, but when I was writing the script, I realised that I didn't really like this book after all. Which is a shame, because I kind of like Shad as an entertainer. He seems like a nice guy, but... We don't take the authors into account when we read these books. I am reading the text. But that was that. Shadow of the Conqueror. And uh, if you want to check out another debut novel, uh, you can check out mine. I don't, I don't think the main character is as annoying as Dalen, so, but you can find out by reading it. Other than that, uh, like, subscribe, share, blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much. Buy my book. Buy my book. Buy my book before it's too late, people.